All right, I'm Toy Point with your first look, right? Janice. Toy, thank you very much. It is time to ask the pet doctor, and our expert is, as always, is Dr. Jerome Williams with the Red Mountain Animal Clinic. Hey, Dr. Williams, good morning. Hey. Good morning. So good to be here. It is good to see you too. All right. I want to start with a question about Halloween since that's coming up this weekend and uh, how to make sure that your pet is safe. You will well remember that Buddy, our golden retriever, got into my son's bag of candy years ago and we didn't know it. We were gone and ate candy wrappers and everything and it was um, yes. it was something and we had to call you about that so right. we know chocolate is not good for animals and and dogs in particular but what about other candies that they may get into uh, the chocolate is the main one and uh, because it contains theobromine which is a stimulant mm -hmm. it's one of the things that's in our coffee that helps stimulate us but the dogs cannot metabolize it and it can cause serious problems in mm. dogs the darker the, the general rule is the darker the chocolate, the more dangerous it is to dogs. And uh, the smaller dogs seem to be at high risk. You know, they can't metabolize it as well. The dark chocolate like we use for cooking mm -hmm. is the one that's most dangerous. The milk chocolate seem to be less so, but all of the chocolates, all of the chocolates are uh, can be harmful to dogs. Now, you ask about the other things. Uh, that they get a hold of the sweets that they have many times can also cause jab upsets mm -hmm. and pancreatitis. Mm. And uh, I don't know whether we get on again before the Thanksgiving season, but those that are preparing Thanksgiving meals and dinners uh, tend to want to share that with the dogs. And mm -hmm. that's, I understand that, but it can cause yeah problems and a serious disease called pancreatitis. So we got to be careful about what we let our pets get a hold of and eat. Mike wanted me to ask you in particular about candy corn, how bad that would be. There's a debate whether uh, we like candy corn. We, I don't. He loves it. But I'm thinking that wouldn't be good for your dog, would it? Uh, I, I don't think it would be a big problem. If you, it's all about uh, the, the quantity that you give. If mm -hmm. it's a small amount, like with most, most things, it tends to be less of a problem. Get those okay. larger amounts, bigger quantities. That tend to be the problem. All right. All right. Our next question, we're going to turn to, since the weather is changing, uh, should we continue using heartworm prevention for a dog? That's one of the questions that uh, some folks submitted for you. Absolutely. I, I would use heartworm medication and flea medication year-round. And uh, because, you know, mosquitoes can lurk uh, in those unusual places. It only takes one mosquito bite to transmit the heartworm disease. So mm -hmm. yes, I would definitely do that. And also, uh, you want to try to get rid of the fleas as best you can going into this winter season because if they go into hibernation and then next spring, you can have a serious problem. So yes, I would, I would continue to use both heartworm medication and flea medication. All right, I know this may be more of a problem in the spring and the summer months, um, but we still see snakes. Uh, from time to time as the weather changes too. So if your pet uh, is ever bitten by a snake, talk about the dangers of that and what you should do. Yes, yeah, you want to get them in right away. We had a case in on Monday. Really? That uh, Yesterday, that uh, had approached a snake, a portion of the snake. Uh, fortunately, we could not find any bite wounds on him, but uh, this time of year, as in spring, you want to be very, very, very careful and having your pets out in those areas where there are snakes. And if there is a bite, get hold of your veterinarian right away. Usually the bite wounds are on the face, yeah. where they're sticking the nose in uh, curiously, or the foot or the paw, where they stick the paw in. Okay. Usually those are the sites we see snakes bite more often. All right, that's it for today. Dr. Jerome Williams, we appreciate you as always from Red Mountain Animal Clinic. Thank you, sir. Okay, stay safe, everybody. Okay, you too. Good to see you. All right, now let's check in with J.J. Pruitt. J.J., 